This video was sponsored by Olight Flashlights. Stick around to the end and I'll show you one of their amazing flashlights in action. Hello everyone, Dan Herb with Dan Herb Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. We are on an adventure today, checking out a new claim, a new hard rock, an old underground mine. This is not it. We actually drove too far. We have to turn around and go back. But as we were driving, we saw off the side of the road, an old adit, and thought we'd go and check it out. Bryson and Sarah are inside already, looking around, and I'm gonna go and join them. It looks like it's a very safe, stable adit. We're only gonna be a moment here before we go check out my claim, and there should be two adits on it as well. Hope you enjoy. So in this area of BC, the hills are littered in these old adits, mine shafts, old exploration of all sorts. And up here in this hillside, it is gold and silver they were looking for. Now looking around at the rocks, I don't necessarily see a vein they were following, but they knew something was here that they were going in looking at. There's a little vein of something. Who is that coming? It is Bryson. How you doing? Not too bad. Find anything interesting back there? Yeah, just some old miniature railway ties with miniature railway spikes. <laughs> There's a little bit of mineralization. Mostly all granite, eh? Yeah, this looks like a gabbro. What's that? Kind of like granite. Kind of like a form of granite, if you will. At least they made it tall enough for us tall guys, eh? Yeah, looks like they were just driving a hole into the mountain to see what they could find. Were they successful at mining for gold this way? Yep. There, there's thousands of these uh, small adits going in just looking to see what the bedrock held in certain areas. There would have been something here that indicated to them that there was a reason to drive an adit in. Somebody had money to invest. There's a shot for the camera. Woo. Hey I'm not grabbing souvenirs. <laughs> I think you're allowed to. I think you're allowed to grab these souvenirs. I don't think anyone minds. Okay, let's go find mine mine. So we found the right road into my claim here and uh, just heading up the road, I found my first indication of possible mining. As I'm driving up, I see this small gravel. It's not like you see the rest of the topsoil and everything around here. It's a small gravel coming down over the hillside. Well, there's a chance it's just a bit of a rock fall, but there's also a good chance that just above it is an old adit or some sort of trenching or something. So let's head up there and see if I'm right. Love having these young ones with me. They can do all the hard work. <laughs> yeah, I, left my pack mule at home. I thought you were my pack mule. So Bryson and Sarah walked up the hill. They say it looks like it's just an old open cut. So no adits there. Probably just exposing the bedrock on the open face there to see if there's any more indication of the court scene. This road should do a hairpin right there and come back up over top here. The adits should be right up there. So we're at the right spot now. We just need to find the actual adits. I see right here is definitely a mine dump. There's no doubt about it. That's a mine dump of some sort. And I'll take a sample of this mine dump to see if uh, it shows anything. Bryson found remnants of cut wood, which could be anything. And uh, Sarah's back there uh, being a mountain goat. I don't know. Sarah's a mountain goat. Sarah's a mountain goat. Looks like you could push them all out. Right, you think that that might just be a collapsed adit right there? You could push it you're, all out. Nothing you're digging in? Off. Digging in to find it? Oh, I could. Oh, here's your adit. Oh, he found the adit. Oh, nice. You typically don't have a mine dump uphill from an adit because people don't like carrying dirt uphill, obviously. So the chances are the adit's above the dump. Is it open? Like, it is open, it's right here. Awesome, he's found it. And I see some exposed rock over there, so there could be another one there. There's supposed to be two side by side, and they're supposed to both follow a quartz vein that is mineralized, has gold and silver in it. Oh, I see quartz. There we go. So there's the mineralized quartz vein right there, and you can see the iron in it. There's probably others, galena, silver, that kind of stuff. We'll take some of these samples to take back with us crushed down and what I'm specifically looking for at this site they say this site has free milled native silver and I'd love to find myself a source of native silver hopefully that's it heading up the hill to see what I can find I'll probably get to the top and then find there was a beautiful trail leading up and grabbing any pieces of the mineralized quartz I see along the way oh heave Oh, oh, steep. Oh, 
I won't grab that chunk. <laughs> it's huge. There's probably an easier way up this hill. <laughs> and apparently the adit's over here somewhere. Let's go in the cave in one. Here we go. You ready for a swim? There's always a pack rat nest in the front. Oh, and it's like really full of water. Let's get some lights. Yeah, it looks like you could run a high banker with all that water. Exactly. So here's the second at it, but it is definitely collapsed in. No sign of an actual opening at all. Though, they were both following the quartz seam. There was two quartz seams, each one went in on its own. So it is possible that we can find surface stuff that shows the quartz. Always have to be careful walking around a collapsed entrance to an adit though, because you could step on a rock that just falls right into the old adit. And here's a chunk of the quartz from the second collapsed adit. This was just sitting on the surface, but we will definitely take it. We got the boss man Dan walking around with his kick in a pan. Hey, look, there's the cute little mountain goat up there doing the, her mountain goat thing. The cute little mountain goat. Always up doing her thing. <laughs> so walking up the hill, which is far too steep for me at the moment, and I'm kind of regretting it, but we did get to the top here and I've found another mine dump for sure. There's no doubt about it. This hill has been dug out of somewhere. Now my research, the area says there should be a pit up here that digs down into the quartz seam. Though this looks like an adit. There's definitely an old adit right here. It's collapsed. This adit obviously went into a shaft. This is collapsed, but whoa, ho, oh, it's a good one. And there's definitely evidence of the quartz seam, mineralization in it, perfect samples. This is kind of what I want to crush down. Oh, and they're everywhere, all over the place. We'll have to bring some buckets up and fill them. Mm hmm, definitely. This is a shaft. Okay. Oh, we have cell service. I just got text messaging. Bonus, you got a good claim. Nice. <laughs> okay, this is definitely the pit up on top. And most likely the adit is coming in just underneath that lip there, but it's collapsed on the outside. So an adit going into a shaft, eh? Yeah, and I see the quartz seam. In situ, that means in place in the host rock. And it's supposed to have native silver. That was a proper ladder too, they even notched out. At that. one point, yeah. We are finding some great samples here. Here's a chunk of the seam that has these black dots going through it. There's a chance that that is some of the native silver or that's where we will find the native silver when we crush that down. There's another one here with those black dots all through it, really metallic. And then Bryson found this one, which is a uh, vuggy. It's got holes in it. This would be a great one to dip in acid and see what cleans up and what's left behind. I was really hoping we'd find more calcite. There's a little section of it right there, calcite. The old file said that there was quartz and calcite together. And nice thing about calcite is it dissolves in a, even a light acid, which reveals the mineralization below it. You get some really nice samples that way. There's a little soft spot in that one there. That's calcite again, yep. This is the calcite right here. So there's another good one to dissolve. Yeah, it almost looks like porous concrete in that little spot there. Yeah, because the rain is acidic enough to actually start dissolving wow. calcite. Look at that scenery. Wow. We are in paradise, that's for sure. So I think I see a piece of native silver in this rock I just broke open. That looks like it. That looks like silver. Woohoo. Good chance if I crush this down, I will see silver in the bottom of the pan. So Sarah and Bryson are heading up the hill to fill up a bucket from the very top of the best looking quartz ore that they can find up there. I'm going to take my bucket and head up to the adit here and fill it up with the material that's up just around the adit. We'll get two buckets. Did you guys bring the bucket with you? I'll come back <laughs> <laughs> And we're gonna see if we can get two buckets of ore to crush and see what we get. We would love for a little bit of gold, but we really want the silver today. I see your bucket. So I'm gonna go have a quick look inside this adit. I'm just gonna step down a couple steps to look inside with the light. Hopefully the 
local pack rat doesn't object too much to me intruding. Let's go see what we find. Cool. There we go. Goes back as far as I can see. Looks like the water is about a foot deep inside, though a nice solid floor. Oh, I just heard Bryson say there's another attic. Is it open? So Bryson just found another collapsed attic up top. Very cool. Now my goal here is to fill up my bucket with ore samples from around this attic. Bryson and Sarah went up top to fill it up from the pit up top. We should have two buckets full of rocks to crush. Though I don't see much right now close by. I might have to go back to the mine dump to get it. Well, there we go. Two buckets full. I'll have to take these back home, run them through the crusher, and see what I find, which will be next week for me. It'll be in two seconds for you. So I've come back to my little off-the-grid cabin here to run the big rock crusher today. Now, I usually use the little angle grinder guy. He's small, does a really good job powdering things, but doesn't go through very much volume. This guy goes through volume fast, and I don't have an output screen on it at the moment, so it has a throughput that is very, very fast, but it leaves a coarse crush. I might take some of the stuff that's a little bit bigger coming out and recrush it. Now, one thing I should make note of when I'm looking at this ore, the files on this mine site say that they got a lot of silver, a lot of lead, and a lot of zinc out of this mine. 10 tons of ore, and they got pounds of each of those things out of it, like lots. Which tells me that there was lots of galena in the ore. I was expecting to see big bands of straight, massive galena sulfides in here, which I don't see. I only see tiny little pockets of sulfides, some of which could be galena. It's not as much as I was expecting to see in this ore. So let's crush her down and see what it looks like in the pan. Maybe I'll get more out in the pan than I was expecting. There's definitely metals in there. Let's get them. Hopefully native silver. Here's a piece of the crush that shows the galena on it. That is definitely some of the galena. So it is there, just not in the quantities I would have expected. So here's what the crush looks like before I get it wet. Here's what the crush looks like after the mud's been rinsed off. You'll notice up to quarter inch rocks in here, but the vast majority of this material is minus 20 mesh. Just a few bigger rocks get through. After panning for just a few seconds, I see lots of sulfides. That's the black material in there coming out. I didn't see that much in the host rocks, like in the raw rocks, but now that I'm panning it, there's a lot of sulfides, which could be that galena that I thought was missing. Okay, here we go. Let's pan this down. Just gonna do it in a small scoop at a time. Gonna take it down a little bit, put more on top. The old mining files from this mine say that uh, they process 10 tons of material, and in that 10 tons, they got I think it was like 8,000 grams of silver. 31 grams, basically an ounce, of gold. And then the amount of uh, lead and zinc they got were in the pounds. Like they got many, many pounds of lead and zinc. Of course, galena is a mixture of lead, zinc, and silver. I only took about 40 pounds of material with me. But if you did the numbers, if you crunched the numbers, 
uh, you end up with still a fairly significant amount of silver in 40 pounds and probably a noticeable amount of gold. The problem with just crunching numbers like that is most of the gold and silver will be locked up in sulfides, in the galena, in the pyrites, which means it won't show itself in a pan like this. It needs to be smelted out or a chemical process. I'm interested in the native metals, the native gold, the native silver. So I am hoping to find some of each of those in here. Not holding my breath, but I'm hoping. See what we got. So, nothing visible with the naked eye, but under the loop I see pieces that look like gold and pieces that look like silver. So I'm going to take this home, put it under the microscope, and see if what I think I see under the loop is what it is. But unfortunately, no big f uh, feathers or big... Uh, trees of native silver, no big chunks of gold, nothing like that. More crushing necessary. More sampling necessary? Yeah. Maybe. If it's actually just that much in there, I don't know if it's worth it. I think I actually see the line of native silver. It's just like a half a millimeter wide at the top of the sulfides there, but it's a slightly different color. So I think that's the native silver in there. Microscope will tell for sure. So here we are in the digital microscope with extremely high magnification. Very, very high, as much as the microscope will do. And surprisingly, I see gold. I see a lot of gold. Look at that, there's probably seven, eight pieces of gold in this one tiny little frame. I don't see that much native silver. I was expecting a lot more silver and a lot less gold. Gold is easy to identify because of its color. The silver, not so much because it's the same color as the pyrites. You go by shape for the silver. See these little round balls here? That's native silver. These square cubes, that's the pyrites. And over here you see a piece of gold that probably has silver attached to it as well. So gold and silver together. But uh, this is like extremely small gold. This is probably thousand mesh, if not smaller, and as much as I can magnify. But there's gold here and not as much silver as I was hoping. I hope you enjoyed our adventure to my new silver mine. Not quite as much silver as I had hoped, but still a fabulous place. The most amazing scenery, really neat adits, mine shafts, everything. Love that spot. Please leave me a comment. I love reading your comments. And a big, big thanks to my patrons. Because of my patrons, I can make these videos for YouTube for everyone to watch. And until the next one, everyone, have a great day. Bye. So I need to show off this new Olight they sent me. It's the M2R Pro Warrior. What an amazing light. Now out here in the dark, I have to use one of my other Olights to show off this new Olight, but here we go. It is a beautiful light. I've got to play with it a little bit already in a really nice case here. So here it is, the M2R Pro Warrior. Let's get another flashlight on it to brighten it up a bit. There we go. What a beautiful little flashlight. It's perfect size for one hand. It's got the magnetic charging with a USB charger in its lithium ion high capacity battery. It has, it's designed for an eight, 1800 lumen light. That's bright. And it uh, is designed to throw the light for 300 meters. So a nice, long, long distance of throw. Very well constructed. They're waterproof. They're drop proof. You could drive a truck over this thing and it wouldn't damage it. Very, very tough. Great construction of flashlight. It has four different light settings. So you can go low, medium, high, right. And I am just loving these mid-sized O-lights. They work very well for me in the situations that I need a light for, like down in an attic. They have a flash sale on this flashlight starting tomorrow. Link below in the description.